Dr. Chowdhury, yeah? He's a Muslim lad. There's something you have to touch on with this. I don't know where... Let me get the gentleman's name. I saw about a doctor the other day who made a statement. I don't know if you read it three weeks ago, saying we haven't got the right PPE, personal protection stuff. And three weeks later, he's dead. And let me just... Let me get this up. Because he wrote a thing to Boris Johnson three weeks before. Now, when you read this, and he basically says, I'm a father... And I, my rights have to be protected. And I've had three children. And you've got to look at the image of him. He might be from where you're from. Your neck of the woods, Alan. Let me, um, Muslim doctor message. Let me just get it up. Because it was, a, I read it. I was, it's a heartbreak message. Um, Dr. Chowdhury, yeah? He's a Muslim lad. Dr. Chowdhury, yeah? He's a Muslim lad. That's him with his family. That's him with his family. So, and you see if there are, I think there's 40 NHS staff have died now. This is Great Britain, a third world country. Our government were fully aware of what was happening in China. How our country can, these doctors, everyone just stood and clapped their hands for two minutes, who are risking their lives, many of them in the vulnerable bracket, are coming back out of retirement. This is the equivalent of running to the front lines. <laughs> and standing on the front lines of the fight. And the fact that we're, I'm here, you read this from a doctor saying we haven't got the right equipment, and then he's left a family, a beautiful family with kids. He sacrificed his life. I think that after all of this, and I love Boris Johnson, after all this, heads have got a role for that. Heads have got a role for sending our troops into foreign fields without the right equipment. You're sending doctors onto the front line. You haven't got the, and it doesn't read like they had the right protective equipment. You had enough knowledge it was coming. And these are men, that man, I look at him, he's got three kids. He's left, he's left, he's got three children now with no dad. Um, and do you know what, when I read it, it was a, it was a point to make about, I always talk a lot about Islam, yeah? That man um, should be recognised for his patriotism and sacrifice. Look at the cost that the men paid on D-Day. I mean, your documentary is called British Heroes. The British heroes were the guys that stormed the beaches of Normandy. The, the British, the Americans, the Canadians, the Indians, and everybody else that stormed those beaches in the 1940s. They're heroes. The First World War. They brought Britain directly into the war. Within a short time, a battle line was drawn between Allied and German armies across Belgium and France. It became known as the Western Front. Britain sustains heavy losses, unable to cope with the German assault. The Indian soldiers are the first non-British troops to arrive. They're fed piecemeal between La Basse and Ypres, and it is here that the 129 Beloch, an infantry regiment, is rushed in. And they are made up of predominantly Muslim sepoys from the frontier Pakistan administered frontier and Pakistan administered Punjab is rushed in. And they are made up of predominantly Muslim sepoys from the frontier, Pakistan administered frontier and Pakistan administered Punjab. The first Indian to receive the Victoria Cross, which is Britain's highest military decoration for valor on the battlefield in the face of the enemy, is the one who belongs to the 129th Baloch. Now, I can't talk much about World War I or II, but I can certainly try and trim it down for you. In terms of casualties, anywhere between 62 to 64,000 fatalities, that is. In terms of injuries, over 100,000. But India's material and financial contributions are just as impressive. 80 million pounds worth of military stores and equipment. 5 million tons of wheat valued at over 40 million pounds sent to Great Britain. And much more to that. But the government of India pays for all its troops overseas, adding about £20 million annually to its wartime military expenditure. And before the, the war is ended, the Viceroy presented a gift of £100 million of imperial tax to Britain. And then they ask us what we did for Britain. But there was one particular ethnic group that was the backbone of the British Indian Army. It was the Punjabi Muslims. And these fellows would once again make that contribution known in World War II. So now let's move on to the Second World War. Germany eventually invades France, and over a period of six years, two and a half million men volunteer for the British Indian Army. Just under a third are Muslim, 
These are the men, once again, from the Punjab region, all Muslim soldiers, who were dispatched as part of the BEF, the British Expeditionary Force, to France. And they were then held back in Dunkirk. Four mule companies left, that's 1,400 men in total, of which around 800 were Muslim. But quickly moving on, three major battle arenas for the British Indian Army, um, North Africa. The North African Peninsula is paramount to the Britain's war. And a month before the outbreak of war, Indians are deployed to North Africa to defend the Suez Canal in Egypt from Mussolini's troops stationed in Libya. And the 4th Indian Division emerges Britain's best infantry division. That's not me saying that. That's the Commander-in-Chief of the British Forces Air, General Montgomery, states that. On that particular day of 11, Mar uh, 11 May 1943, 275,000 Italian and German troops surrender. And there's a wonderful letter written by Harold Alexander to the Prime Minister, Churchill. He says, sir, it is my duty to report. The Tunisian campaign is over. All enemy resistance has ceased. We are masters of the North African shores. And indeed, the Indians have played a pivotal role in that battle. From my study, 122 boys under the age of 17 fell in Italy. 90 were Muslim. Each one of them, bar one, were from cities now in Pakistan. The major areas were Uttak, 15, Kohat, 21, and then Rawalpindi, which is obviously Punjab again at 23. And um, it really does make you think, or perhaps question, why so many young men? Well, between 1940 and 1942, there was a dip in enlistment amongst the Sikh and the uh, Hindu community, for which reason Britain was now ever reliant, or even more reliant, on the Punjabi Muslims and the men of the frontier. And this is why they came to help out. This is why they fought. After um, World War II and partition, um, the Pakistan, Pakistan itself takes in or absorbs a disproportionately large um, aspect of the British Indian Army, for which reason it seems to default to military rule, whereas India absorbs the Indian civil service and a disproportionately large aspect of the Indian civil service, for which reason it seems to always function best as a political administration has not really had uh, military ruler or junta in that case. 